water. This is the story of my journey to discover the secret of water bending, aka water levitation, in the best place in the world to do so, Dujiangyan. In order to fully understand this story, you need to first understand the history of this place and how I arrived at this point. So we're gonna have to rewind to the previous day. Water is life. And nowhere has that statement been more true than right here in Dujiang Yen, located in Sichuan Province, Western China. Over 2,000 years ago, this source of water injected life into the state of Qin, a dynasty which thereafter became the first to unify China. It is Qin where the name China originates from, but none of that would have been possible without Dujiang Yen. Let's go back to the year 256 BC, when this area was plagued by severe flooding in the rainy season and severe drought in the dry season. Li Bing, governor of the region, set out to create an irrigation system, but not just any irrigation system, because the river needed to be kept clear for military vessels to pass through. A dam wouldn't be suitable. What Li Bing went on to create was the first dammless irrigation system in the history of the world. And it is truly a masterpiece of nature. So what Li Bing did all those years ago is he had thousands of these kinds of cages here. They were made of bamboo and they're filled with stones. He had thousands of these cages thrown into the river. And what that did is it created an inner stream and then another outer stream. I'll tell you what, that's one pretty sight, ain't it? They call it the Yule Mountain. And right over there, that waterway, 2,000 years ago, that wasn't here. They had to literally carve it out of the mountain. And keep in mind, this was before the time of gunpowder. So the way they had to do it was take fire and heat the rock and then pour water onto the hot rock, which would crack it. It's hard to imagine how many times they would have had to repeat that process over and over again. But they did it. And all the rest of it was just left up to physics. I guess the way this waterway is designed and due to centripetal force, most of the rocks and sediment is left to pile up in the outer channel, and then the inner channel is left to flow clear on block all the way through. With the opening of this passageway, 200 hectares of farmland was irrigated, today benefiting 23 million people. And back then, it was just the perfect boost in food supply that the Kingdom of Qin needed to be able to have an advantage over its competitors and become the first fully united Chinese empire. Standing in all the glory of Du Jiangyan, there's just something about this body of water that wows me. Maybe it's the history, maybe it's all the Taoist influence here, or maybe it's this water flows so fast, up to 700 cubic meters per second, and there's all kinds of rocks and protrusions and centrifugal forces that make the water move in all kinds of funky ways. It makes me wonder if there's some kind of wander-bending master hiding deep in the mountains, making the water magically move. So if there was ever a place to study water bending, it's right here. Since I was a kid, I've been a huge fan of Avatar The Last Airbender, a TV show in which people use martial arts moves to levitate different elements of nature, including water. And just like every fan of the show, it's been a long time dream of mine to be able to bend the elements in real life. According to personalitylist.com, the Myers-Briggs personality type of a waterbender or person who can levitate and move water is INFP. And that's my personality type. So let these waters be my witness as today I, Noah Kartha, learn how to become a 
fully fledged water bender along these waters. I am the moon. I push and pull tides. I am tidal wave. Is it possible to move water without touching it? Yes, I think. So. Yes. Do you know how? Do you know how it can be possible? Uh, by your heart. Clay, clay. Uh, Whoa, this question. Sorry, I don't know. I am electromagnetic. Electromagnetic. I'm guitar. My name's guitar. believe it's possible for a Tai Chi master to do Tai Chi to levitate the water. The real Tai Chi master, maybe they can. Whoa, yes. Yes. So what I'm really banking on is to find a water bending master. Now let me explain. Water bending from the show Avatar was actually based off of Tai Chi. And actually where we are right now, Du Jiang Yen is located in the area that is considered to be the home of Taoism. If I can find a just really, really advanced Tai Chi or Taoist master, then they can teach me everything I need to know about water bending. So I just passed by this group of people doing Qigong, maybe also Tai Chi. They've totally got the water bending vibe. Do you have any ideas where I could find this kind of Tai Chi master in Zhu Jiangyan? Maybe in Qingchengsha? And this question I don't know. Find these masters is very difficult. In the third century, Li Bin was enshrined as a water deity in the spot known today known as Erlong Temple. So I'm hoping, popping over there, learning a thing or two about water gods, putting in a prayer or two, I think it's gonna help me in this water bending expedition. When the Zhongshuka bookstore in Dujianyan opened in 2020, it gained a lot of publicity, even internationally, for its serene design. The mirrors all over the place, even on the ceilings, make this place seem ginormous and give you the sense that there's hidden passageways at each corner. And it's even said that the architect for this bookstore got his inspiration for the design from the Dujianyan irrigation project and it makes sense the elegant stairways remind you of the, the graceful flow of water and all the arches bring to mind water dams speaking of water I wonder if they have any books on water bending Definitely a great spot to just chill out after a very long day. I think there were a lot of positives to take home from this day. The majority of people I interviewed actually believe that it's possible to bend water, which first leaves me optimistic. But I'm honestly shocked that in 2022, it's so easy to find people who believe that you can levitate water. And of the people I interviewed, there were a few that said, if I want to find a water bending master, it's a good idea to go check out the into the mountains and the one lady actually did recommend that I go check out Qingcheng Mountain. Qingcheng Mountain is a gorgeous place. I actually visited it last year and made a vlog about it. I'll put the link for that here. There's also another hidden secret mystical part of Qingcheng Mountain that I've never been to. It's called the Qingcheng Back Mountain. So get ready folks because tomorrow we're hitting the road bright and early on our way to the Back Mountains. 
you're interested in some more fun travel vlogs exploring China's hidden gems, make sure to subscribe to this channel. So here I am at the base of Xingcheng Back Mount. Right off the bat, we were off to a difficult start when I discovered there was only one temple on the mount and it was a Buddhist temple. I'm just gonna hike the mountain and keep my eyes peeled for any magical, mysterious looking characters. Back Mountain was a heavenly oasis full of serenely peaceful streams. However, I searched and searched for hours waiting for my heart to lead me to a water bending master. But again, no success. But I continued listening to my heart and it told me to sit by the stream and meditate upon connecting with the water. It's from here that I was led on a remarkable spiritual journey that no one could have predicted. To give me the power to bend you. And so from there, I talked to God and asked it to give me the power to bend the water. And this is what God told me. What is water bending? Water bending is opening your heart and connecting to water. From the deepening of that connection, there is a push and pull between the water and your heart and mind that cleanses you inside. There is nothing more cleansing and more loving than water in this world. Its purpose is to cleanse, to purify. It is not simply becoming the water. Water only follows the flow of the other forces of nature and what the other forces of nature tell it to do. To be a water bender means you fully connect with the water in your heart and mind and soul and spirit and give it the opportunity to cleanse you within. The water just cleansed everything, cleansed everything, cleansed everything, and all that was left me was this ego, this force, this push, this push. Then God kept asking, why do you want to bend the water? As I looked inside for the answer, I realized that I actually didn't really care about physically bending the water. It was only my ego that desired to levitate the water. And I realized that this voice in my head that held that desire was actually the only part of me that was holding me back. So I just sat there as the water slowly cleansed this ego away. The water says sometimes if it's a small stick, it'll just flow down the creek. It's very easy for the water to cleanse it. If it's a larger stick, then maybe after continual force for a little while, the water will cleanse it away. But if it's a big, hard rock, that's more difficult. But it will eventually erode away. It might take a while, but the water is just going to keep cleansing if I let it. And eventually that big rock will just be sand that flows down the creek just as easily as the water does. When you go down this path, if you take this path all the way down to the end, both God and the water clearly let me know that it is possible to bend water, but only when your inside is as pure as water itself, then you are able to bend the water. But in the water's eyes, in God's eyes, in the soul's eyes, in spirit's eyes, there is no difference between what I'm doing here and cleansing the inside now and when I'm fully purified being being able to move the water itself. It is one and the same. I am water bending now in this moment. It was a difficult journey full of plenty of bumps in the stream, but to arrive at this ending, not only did the water bending feel 
amazing, but it's beautiful how everything just ties together. How ironic is it that I set out in this video to bend the water, and in the end, the water was the one that bended me. As Guru Patik explains in season 2 of Avatar, the energy within the body behaves the same as a stream of water does. So just as an irrigation system has the power to regulate the flow of a body of water, we all have the power to regulate the flow of our own bodily energy. So why not try it yourself? Go sit by a beautiful sounding water stream and focus on opening your heart to the water and see where it leads you. Who knows? One day it might help you to realize your whole avatar potential that you've always known you've had. I'll see y'all for the next great shine.